Greetings, traveler. All right, guys. So, for those of you who don't know what's going on, I am going to uh, review a game right now. I do that from time to time, especially if it's a really fun, really cool game. We are going to be looking at a game from Beater Babbitt. So, let me put that on stream. This is, uh, I've looked at the game very slightly, just sort of to see, okay, what's it about? But I definitely didn't study every turn in depth, which I think is a lot of fun because it means that I still have uh, some surprises left for myself in the game as well. Is this paid? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> Peter's like, hey, Shady, here's a big sack of money. Can you review my game? No, this is not paid. <laughs> but I like the idea of Peter just coming with sacks of money, like, hey, Shady, you want to review my game on stream? <laughs> Uh, no, no. Beater's a friend, and uh, these games do eventually end up on YouTube, so it's sort of just good for everyone. I'm watching a high-level player, I get better at the game, you guys get to watch an insane game. Anyone that doesn't know of Beater yet, they can, you know, they can find him, right? We're gonna have links to his uh, Twitch and YouTube in the video and all that. Well, I do know it's gonna be a Vulgin game, and he picks it very quickly. So we have access to Demons, and we have access to Nagas. Those are two different mechanics that Vol'jin can really, really exploit in the buddy meta. And that is because anytime you can make temporary stats, which Vol'jin is very good at, you can also make them permanent if you use Shellamental or something like a Felbat or the, uh, the tier three imp guy. So for me, these are always interesting as well because I can see what I would have done in the early game and see if there's any difference, see if uh, Beater has some more... Precision isn't really the right word, but uh, efficiency, I guess, right? Lose a little bit less health. Like, for instance, this freeze I definitely wouldn't have done. So he makes the big divine shield, which makes sense. Uh, but then does this freeze indicate that he's going for a chief curve? Does it just mean he wants to level and he wants to have this lasso? Did he just want to see what the extra minion in the shop was? All right, he will level, uh, but does he freeze that lasso again? No, so he froze the lasso because maybe he gets another good minion in the shop that he would want, and then maybe he could Jeeve curve. I don't know. It's like a small, small thing, but it's cool. He's going to tie that 5-6, which is rare, but that's because he has the extra damage. Okay, I guess we just sell the Anoyatron here, because the chicken and the 2-5 are insane. Although, he could also just buy the damage and freeze. Yeah, 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 never mind. I see it. That's better. So the reason why we want to freeze is the chicken gives a temporary damage boost, which is really good with the shipwright, who gets a lot of extra health. Oh, yeah, yeah. Last turn, he probably froze the Mana Saber to make sure he could have another 4 damage. You're right, chat. That's what he did. Okay, so for, for this one, my instinct was, oh, we just sell because those are two really good minions. But then I saw that we have the pointy arrow in the shop. And the pointy arrow in the shop in combination with the ship ride is definitely decent. You're getting a lot of attack on a low attack minion. And then you're also increasing the health. All right, so that seems like a really stable start because as Vol'jin... I do assume that he wants to make a large minion so that he has a big pile of stats to work with once the buddy is out. And he finds a way to, you know, make those stats permanent. Ooh, going for the level here. So not interested in the chicken. So I suppose after rolling the coin and he gets a good way to use that leftover gold, he's thinking, okay, I'm probably going to have a big enough minion anyway. Let me level and try to get access to the uh, the tier 3 demon a little earlier. That's interesting. Yeah, he gets the uh, he gets the extra damage on the board with the hero power and is able to tie. If you if you can get extra damage early, you're just more likely to kill things, which just sounds so obvious, right? But like a 1-2 Anoyatron doesn't kill anything. Uh, a 7-2 Anoyatron kills two things most of the time. We'll buy two Malkazars straight away. <laughs> Probably because he was looking for that card. And then he's like, wait, I rolled it already. Why do I have all these Malkazars for? Yeah, we sell out of Anoyatron, which is a bit sad because that's her one shield. Now, this will be interesting. Is he going to YOLO buff the shop to try and get it? I don't think so, just because it's only damage. He's not using his buddy yet, right? We're going to see here. Hey, Sloth, thank you for the four. Okay, he is going to try it. Sure. One in three, classic streamer luck? No. Unfortunate lack of streamer luck for Beater in this one. 
Okay, now unfortunately the opponent does have the chicken, which is going to give him a lot of extra damage, so the ship ride is not going to tank a bunch of units. So this is a sort of a costly round where he does take a lot of damage, but he does have his basic setup already. Now, does he pay 7 for the buddy? Uh, intuitively, no, but we'll see how much he values it. Because I think what Beater wants to be able to do now is he wants to be able to isolate a minion in the shop. Ooh, okay, that's huge, right? He found another imp and he found a shop buff. That's a really good turn. So I don't think we'll be buddying yet after seeing this. Um, okay, he's gonna buy the spell. And the reason why is that because he bought two units, he can guarantee that he's going to eat his buff. So he has two imps on the board. So if he can, if he can reduce the shop space to two, this means that he will always eat. So that doesn't really make sense to roll uh, to try and spend the leftover gold. So that's good. That's a cute. That's a cute little thing to take for our own Vulgin games. Where hey, you know, even if you have leftover gold, it's it's okay. Just reduce the shop size by buying, and then guarantee that your buff is permanent. So I would assume that we are going to buddy next turn. Because now we can make the health Bermina, um, permanent as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. The, honestly, probably the most interesting thing for me so far is that he uh, sort of snap bought those two Malkazars. Oh, he got a golden one. Wait, is he just going to buy the whole shop now? Because if he buddies, he goes to five gold, right? Ooh, yeah, five gold's tough to buy the whole shop. I just want to see how Beater's mind works here. Yeah, I guess you start with buying that and you're probably not leveling because you probably want a buddy. Peggy for the ship ride, I suppose, is fine. I don't think he necessarily needs to buy another minion here. I guess what he could do is just double buy and not buddy, but then he's not making the health permanent. But if he buddies, he's not really making the health permanent either. Well, he could just sell a bunch here, but he could just YOLO it too. I wonder if he's... Because you can see the dilemma here, right? Like, he wants to have only one minion in the shop. So he could theoretically sell his Malkazars here and arrange that. Okay, he's going to settle for that. Because it's just too good to guarantee it. Alright, he's looking what he wants to copy. He could have gained a little bit of extra health from the shipwright. But he's going to opt for the uh, more balanced stats of the imp that has more damage. And now this just, essentially what Beater has done is he's put himself in a position where he's not really going to be losing unless the opponent has access to Leroy or Poison, but there is no Bramble Witch in this lobby because there's no Quilbur Elemental and there's no Murlocs in this lobby. So it's very hard to do Venom stuff, if not impossible. So I guess you have Venom on the, the shield Naga. So now Beater is already in a position where as long as he can keep copying this imp's stats, he's going to double it. Because the text on the golden imp is uh, eat the stats, uh, but double them. So this is, this is going to scale really, really hard. So what's interesting now is to see how much does he force that. Is he just continuously going to buy the whole shop and say, hey, let's just make sure there's one unit and that's all I got to be doing here. And it seems like that's what he's going to be doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta have one unit in the shop and that's okay. Uh, now, will he level increasing the size of the shop? I guess he is. Okay. He's still gonna level. I don't think we taunt that because, you know, that makes the threat of the Leroy higher. Now we have a 4962 in the shop. That's going to get eaten. And then um, he doubles those stats. So that's another 120 health added right now. Pretty silly. Okay. So yeah, this is, this is cool to see that he's... Uh, and I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah, he's, you know, wasting his gold buying bad cards, but he's the, the net result is that he's gaining 120 health on turn 8 for the invested gold, right? So that is a... That's a good investment. Yeah, and now we can see that the opponent has a Shellamental on the board. That's something that Beater would love as well, because then he can move all the stats from his Imp to the shop then uh, use Shellamentals on the shop. So he wouldn't even need to eat the whole shop anymore because he could just say, hey, I'm just not going to double it, but I'm, I'll have a bunch of Shellamentals as well. So yeah, this is... this is uh, Like, you have to be able to do this in this meta, right? Like, when you see a Vol'jin and you see, oh, demons are in, I'm just going to force this because it seems like a really 
high on average right return strategy now there is a world where beater says i'm going to skip the eat this turn and i'm just going to go to five here because going to five opens up the shellies nope he's like no 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 too early too early oh i guess what he has in the shop is that two five which is nice um picky eater is really good at reducing shop size so i'm guessing he's gonna buy another picky eater here yeah he can use that in the future, because instead of having to buy the units, he can just eat them. <laughs> yeah, so now he buys one unit, eats the other one, swaps to the other, and then he has one picky eater spare to do that again next turn, to reduce the shop size to one and, and make sure he gets all those stats. And now we can see the rhythm, you know, when he opted to go to tier 4, when he's going to opt to go to tier 5. But we can, we can see that... He's now in a position where unless the opponent has a Leroy, it's not going to die. So this is probably too strong. <laughs> I'm guessing we're going to see a ban on Vol'jin in Demon and Naga lobbies. Uh, which is sad, because I really, really, really like playing Vol'jin. And old Vol'jin was super fun and already was banned in Demon Naga lobbies, I think. Uh, but then they then they nerfed him and he became available again. All right, so how is he going to tackle this turn? Are we going to see a tier to five? Is he going to buy the whole thing again? He does have some cute things there with the Peggy and the Shipwright, but it's just so irrelevant. Yeah, he's he's. I think he quickly did the math on the money, right? Because he's getting money from the Brawler here. Okay, yes, is still going to sell. So I, I'm guessing he's trying to do something where... Yeah, this might still just be triple buy. And then maybe next turn he has enough money. What he could do is triple buy now, swap, and then next turn he could probably level and buy the whole shop. Yeah. Ooh, he's gonna end up leveling? Does he have the money? Yeah, he does. He does. Cool. Yeah, he can already level now. He can triple sell. Keep the fairings. And he found a way to have enough uh, money to buy the whole shop and the tier. And that seems to make sense, right? Seems to make sense that you just want to do that. <laughs> oh, it's so dirty. The shipwright also getting buffed in the shop. He's optimizing all those little stats. Yeah, here we go. Up to 1,600. And it's really just the threat of Leroy. Because this is a perfect lobby to do this. No Quillbor or Elementals for Bramble Witch. No Murlocs for Poison. This is going to be much weaker in a Murloc lobby. Where you have to be afraid of somebody having Belcher. And then poisoning the rest of their board. But in a no Murloc lobby this seems incredibly tough to beat. How would you play this in a Naga lobby? So in a Naga lobby, you would probably uh, just use a lot of Spellcraft early to uh, get more value from your swap. And then you would just use the Tempo to level to 5 and try to get Shellamental. It's going to be much more stable in a Demon lobby because he can already get his permanent scaling on Tier 3. As opposed to having to make it to Tier 5 and then still having to roll Shellamental. So, I think it's uh, far, far stronger in a lobby where you have both the Demons and the Nagas. And we killed the Sire that had Pilfered Lambs. Now the interesting thing is, how much is he gonna roll? Because once he starts rolling, he's not gonna have enough money to buy the shop to guarantee to eat. So, I think he's also figuring that out in real time. Seeing how much can I roll? Do I want to skip the eat for one turn at all? Or... Do I just want to keep doubling? And I mean, it's working so far. And again, we talked about how it's pretty much just Leroy. So as long as he just makes a unit that cannot be killed other than Leroy, it's pretty good. There's not even Nightbane, right? With Nightbane, you could argue, okay, somebody could get enough damage with Nightbane. All right. But yeah, he's going to be just content doing it like this. He does go for the pants, which is interesting here. I guess he wants to have more taunt units to really try to dodge the Leroy, yeah. Okay. Do we need fell blood? Do you mean fell bat? Um, not really, because there's only one big unit. 
if you're thinking about just winning the game, right, which is the objective that Beater has, he's pretty much just thinking about Leroy right now. He's just thinking about how can I not get Leroy. -ed. And one of the best ways, I guess, is to get Shellamental, and that starts spreading the um, that starts spreading the stats. Once you spread the stats, it's going to be very, very silly because <clears throat> he's going to get a Golden Buddy at some point, which is going to double the health, and he's already at, like, what, 5,000 health or so? So, 5,000 health on the shop, and it's only going to double. Then he just makes uh, 5,000 health units every time he plays a Shellamental buff. He could play a Picky Eater, sure. He can, sure. But right now he's still just making... Um, Making his ball of stats bigger. Alright, I think he's saying 5,000 will do. <laughs> 5,000 will do. Uh, I'm I'm now trying to spread 5,000 to my other units. Deflectobot is a really good card to buff, but... like I mean, technically, he could just take the stats from the Imp, move it to Deflectobot, and then he, he doesn't realistically lose anymore. Like, real, realistically speaking, if he makes a 5,000 <laughs> health Deflectobot, he doesn't lose anymore. It's not as much fun, <laughs> but it would be fine. But it, it would be way more fun to continue scaling. He doesn't really need it. That's the thing. You could do this with Magnetic too. Yes and no. The Magnetic buff wouldn't be permanent, so it would go away afterwards. Alright, he's buying Blaster to try and kill Leroy. Strange turn, what is he looking for? He's looking for Shellamental. And maybe Leroy's of his own, taking them out of the pool, which is a small benefit. But it also means that he just has units that one shot, which is nice. <clears throat> All right, the opponent doesn't have scam, so this fight is uh, completely irrelevant. <laughs> That's going to feel every time we're just going to check the board for Leroy. And if they don't have Leroy or Coiler, the board is uh, just not relevant, which is pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you gum up against this, it's pretty brutal. It's like, oh, you're doing that. Okay, I guess I'll just die. Because the Lich had a decent board. It's just, yeah. Can't deal 5,000 damage. So let's see if we're going to see a um, Golden Buddy this turn. I guess it doesn't really do that much unless he gets the Shellamental. The Poison Naga is also okay to have an extra unit, but then he needs to buy the spells. It's kind of whatever. I think he's really just saying, let's see if I roll Shell. Oh, okay. Anna Leroy. Okay. So those were the two he was rolling for. Because you could see he was super happy with Leroy. And it's like, oh, wait, there's a Shell. So I think now he's quickly running the numbers. Can I reduce the shop to one and uh, make the stats permanent and then copy it? Doesn't seem like it, right? That's pretty expensive. But he can copy with Shell, which is nice. Hey, Aviseras. Thank you for the 13. All right, get some money from the overconfidence. So he's going to make it a 1 and 3. Play the Leroy first, because a big Leroy is fine. Basically anything but the Imp, right? Okay. Yeah, and now it's a really, really tough... Um, now it's a really, really tough position to navigate for the opponents, because now he has two units with uh, 5,000, which is uh, really nice. Yeah, this is too much. This is too much. Oh, and he hit it! He hit it! 15,000 health on the imp. 33%er. Now, if he can get more Shellamentals, every Shellamental he rolls is going to be plus 15,000 health. We already see that he has the Pharynx on the board. So if he can land one buff on that, that's a fantastic target. Again, right, this is so strong that in a lobby where there's just Leroy, it's pretty much over. <laughs> it's pretty much over. We'll see. There is a Gallywix, right, still alive, but even Gallywix doesn't get this big. Unless he's doing, you know, some kind of... Uh, no, no, I, I don't think without the Vol'jin hero power there's a way... Oh, he has a sh Oh, right, he has Zesty. 
Okay, so Zesty is going to bounce this shell back to him. So what he can do is he can move the stats on top of the Zesty and then shell and then shell again. <laughs> and he's going to get it back. That's pretty disgusting. All right, look at how much health it has. It has 30,000 health because the sh uh, because the Vulgen buddy is now doubling the health. Oh my god. Does he just freeze Zesty to do that again next turn? Or does he want to roll more Shalemental? That's an interesting... That's an interesting question. Alright. 30,000 health plus going to... Aw, oh, the shell? That's so good. <laughs> Wait. That's 60,000 health, right? On the shell right now. Yeah, I think he just levels and freezes, right? Because that's too clean. So he has 60,000 health that he can now move. And maybe he just eats it again. That would be super, of course. Let's just uh, speed ahead and find out. One in five. Ah, I was ready. I was ready. He doubles it? No. Yeah, yeah. So he has 60,000 on the shell. So now that's going to be 120,000 health. You're right. 120,000 health. Uh, and then, a n so next turn, if he doesn't get any additional buffs, he's already getting 240,000 health. Why didn't he buy the scouts? I think he did buy, right? Uh, whatever. Whether he did or not, it's not relevant. When are we getting an updated tier list? When it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a specific date. It's Well, see, the thing is, to make a tier list, you first have to play the game a bit and see what's strong. Um, so it's not something that I can do uh, immediately. Oh, right, right, right. Actually, he doesn't want to eat Zesty. If he buys a minion from the shop, he's going to make it more likely the Zesty is gone. And he really wants the Zesty for this turn. Whee! <laughs> Dude, this is insane. I can't even read the numbers. I guess 120, right? Yeah. There's a Coiler. Plus 4, plus 4 on his Leroy. And on his pharynx. Oh my god. Holy crap. Yeah, when the numbers are hard to read, you know you're doing a good job. Those are usually the games that probably shouldn't exist. If you just... If you can't read your numbers anymore. That's a good board. I mean, he's obviously not gonna do anything, but... 4,000? Wait, six. Thousand health on the beatboxer? Like, man, to take second place with a 6,000 health beatboxer is pretty sad. This guy was just playing his heart out, stacking and stacking and stacking and stacking, and Beater's like, yeah, you're a couple, uh, couple hundred thousand short there, my dude. Just a couple hundred thousand damage short. Alright, well, this, this is obviously super silly. Um, but yeah, I mean, until they nerf this... Fulgen and a demon lobby especially. Uh, a demon naga lobby is 100%. Like, super, super disgusting. Whoo! Alright. GG. Damn. Crazy game.